Hello, everyone, and welcome to Key Connections Lessons in Networking. My name is Sole Sanchez. I'm the Assistant Director of Chapter and Association Relations and Member Engagement at Phi Beta Kappa. We're so grateful that you joined us tonight for this discussion on networking, as it is a, an important tool for expanding your social and professional circles, diversifying your experiences, and finding mentors and sponsors to assist you and advocate you for you during your journey. Being a Phi Beta Kappa member gives you access to a large community of diverse professionals. And we hope that you leave this event with tools you need to take advantage of this network. This event topic was chosen in response to member surveys and we thank you for your feedback and your continued engagement. Our moderator tonight is Yael Gallagher. Yael was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa and studied international relations at Boston College and now works as the Vice President of Corporate Partnerships with the Los Angeles Sparks. In addition to her work, Yao serves as the Senior Vice President and Co-Vice President of Programs for the Southern California Phi Beta Kappa Association. We are so grateful to have her here with us tonight. Before I pass it over to Yao, I want to acknowledge that the Phi Beta Kappa Society's early development took place at a time when slavery fundamentally shaped American colleges and the nation's revolutionary experiment. The society will continue to examine our history and our responsibilities as we guide the next generation to meaningful, productive, and engaged lives and career. Thank you all for joining us in this work. Yael? Thank you, Salai, and thank you for that introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you welcome you all to our Key Connections conversation this evening, uh, which will examine networking and how it's played a role in our career development. Uh, Soleil, Soleil mentioned that I studied international studies in college and now am working in sports sponsorship. So this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart because as you can imagine, I would not have been able to make the transition from one all the way throughout my career to the other without the power of relationships and networking. I also want to make sure that we take note of the fact that as we talk about networking today, we're all sitting here in this really powerful group that is Phi Beta Kappa as our world grows and becomes more connected in the digital age, we really encourage you to take as much advantage as possible of those relationships that we do have with each other, because that's where networking really starts, right? It's creating affinity like the ones that we have with our local chapters in Phi Beta Kappa, as well as nationally for this Key Connections event. So with that said, I want to transition over to our panelists. We're so grateful uh, that they can join us this evening to share their considerable experience and expertise. Our first speaker this evening is Mark Pranger. Mark was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa and studied psychology at the University of Cincinnati and completed his master's in human resource management at The Ohio State University. Mark currently serves as the Manager of Talent Development with NBC Universal. Welcome to our panel, Mark. This Thank evening. you. Our, Mark was very adamant about that, to see. Our second speaker is Kate Szymanski, the Director of Professional Development and Internships at the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Villanova University. Kate was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa and graduated from Villanova with a degree in history and political science and completed her master's degree in journalism from Columbia University. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here with everyone tonight. Delighted to have you. Uh, rounding out our cohort of presenters is Jackie Swan. Jackie is Corporate Development Associate with Thien Holdings. She graduated from Wellesley College with a degree in economics, where she was inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. Jackie also serves Phi Beta Kappa in a volunteer capacity as the Outreach and Activities Chair of the Boston Association. Thank you for joining us, Jackie. So, so as you can hear from these quick, brief, but accomplished bios. We have a tremendous amount of knowledge and experience represented here tonight. Uh, we'd like to start off by giving the panelists the opportunity to share how they got where they are today. So Jackie, would you like to start us off? Sure, uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to um, thank Soleil and Yael and everyone else uh, for organizing this wonderful event. Uh, 
great to see everyone here. Um, so my name is Jackie. I graduated from Wellesley in 2020. Um, my first two years of college, I was very much focused on academia and my experience was geared towards research. So it was very late in um, like my junior year that I realized that I wanted to transition into something that's more fast paced. Um, Cause I've discovered that I don't have a lot of patience. And so I started to recruit for finance roles um, very late and it was thanks to my um, Wellesley network that uh, I was able to find a private equity esque investment vehicle for a summer internship my junior year. And so upon graduation, that through and through that internship, I was able to um, recruit for a job at Mass Mutual, and that was a very great first job to have because it was partially equity research, partially data analysis, strategy consulting, and merger and acquisitions. And I was able to also build a lot of meaningful relationships there. Um, so after about a year and a half at Mass Mutual, um, through went through all four rotations, I discovered that I enjoyed merger and acquisitions the most, and so I started looking for roles that um, only focused on merger and acquisitions, or M&A for short, and so that's when I joined a scene about a year ago now, um, and I currently live in New York City, just moved here last December, um, and right now um, we're entirely transaction focused. Um, my role is uh, my role is comprehensive of the entire deal cycle. So uh, that includes like sourcing, pitching, uh, execution, um, and everything in between. So yeah, that's uh, how I got here. Um, and uh, just wanted to uh, stress that um, I would not be here without um, all the very wonderful people that I've met along the way. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kate. Thank you so much, Jackie. How fascinating. You've done so much in such a short amount of time. Hello. Good evening, everybody. I'm Kate. I'm delighted again to be with you this evening. Um, when I emerged, graduated from undergraduate, my undergraduate education at Villanova University, I didn't have a clue what networking was, what it meant, or how to do it. Um, I think I naturally fell into a pattern of wanting to develop relationships with people with whom I worked in, in the workplace. Um, I began my career working as a reporter, a writer, a journalist, doing things that I absolutely loved. My career took some pivots along the way. I worked um, for Runner's World magazine in the UK. I worked for local newspapers in the Philadelphia area. Um, and I made a decision along the way that while I very much enjoyed um, being a journalist, the hours, the late nights was something that wasn't working with my life. So I pivoted more, quote, to the dark side, doing more PR focused and strategic communications type writing, which I also found extraordinarily rewarding, um, building those experiences in the nonprofit spaces. So working for organizations whose missions I truly believed in, valued, and wanted to advance. Um, but back to my undergraduate life, I was very involved at Villanova, but also extraordinarily focused on achieving in the classroom and wanting to do very well academically. And as I reflect back, I had put on a set of blinders, I think, that I need to do this work, carry this weight alone. And if I don't do it alone by myself, it's not authentic. It's not genuine. And how terribly mistaken I was. As my career has advanced, and I've stayed within that nonprofit realm, but now working in higher education where I've built the bulk of my career, I've realized that incredible value of building relationships with people. I didn't think that was networking. I was presenting, I think, as a maybe a first generation college student, not knowing terminology, not having that sophistication maybe that some of my peers did have earlier in their careers. I just wanted to get to know people and I wanted to produce quality work. Um, but what I do want to share is this. Many of the qualities that allowed me to excel in the classroom have allowed me to excel in my career. However, early on, I was absent certain qualities that lead to, I think, a faster paced, successful career. 
And those pieces involved more networking that was strategic, identifying maybe companies, organizations of interest, thinking about the people who work in those and establishing relationships with them. Um, so that's a little bit about my journey. What I do now, present day at Villanova, maybe ironically a little bit, is help Villanova students learn these very skills so they don't flounder earlier on in their careers. And I find the work extraordinarily rewarding. Um, and to all of you, congratulations on, on being inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. I hope that you leverage the strength of your regional chapters along with the national organization and keep attending events just like this one. And now what an honor it is for me to pivot to my colleague here, Mark. Thank you very much, Kate. I appreciate that. Um, you know, we've got uh, two things that this is my segue that we've got uh, similar. One is our uh, institutions that we learn schooling at right behind us on screen. Yes, this actual physical thing I have behind me, I definitely did learn, uh, you know, a a magic at the, the Wizarding World of Hogwarts. Um, <laughs> just like you have a villain up behind you. <laughs> but also, um, you know, what you said there, Kate, about coming out of school and just thinking, I don't really know about this networking thing. People talk about it. I hear it's so important. What is this? Why should I do this? How do I do this? Um, I think I, I kind of, I still feel that a little bit to this day around that, but I think we've got a lot that we can share about our journeys today. So uh, I want to get a bit into how I got to where I am today. So just starting out uh, in undergrad, I actually started out in computer science, so programming, things like that. My brother got into that a, bit, a few years before me. I, was, I, I love computers, technology, video games, all those things. I was like, that's what I want to do. So I actually started out at University of Cincinnati in computers and then realized very quickly that, oh, no, I don't want to sit in a cubicle all day, every day and get in this programming flow state and just be stuck in this and not see people and just have thousands of lines of code, which, mind you, I do still like coding, but to do that all day, every day, I was like, oh no, for me, that's something I will burn out doing. So I, I really sat and thought, you know, what is it that I think about every single day? What motivates me? And then I thought, aha, motivation, this idea of what motivates people. I think about that every single day. Why do people do what they do to a very, you know, the, 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 the smallest detail of why did they choose that particular word instead of another word? Why is it that they move themselves slightly to the left versus the right? I was actually reading a book on body language at the time that really got me in, in, interested in kind of the unconscious mind and how it influences us without us realizing it. So I got into psychology at the University of Cincinnati and finished out my undergrad degree there and then got to the end of my degree and thought, oh no, what am I going to do with psychology? This is probably one of the most broad fields there is. Uh, it's a great foundational degree, but what do I do? Do I go to be a clinician? I think I'd be good at that, but oh, I don't know if I have the patience to tell people, here's how you can fix your, your problems. And then they don't fix their problems with that, which I realize is a very reductive look at the field of clinical psychology and psychiatry. But I was just like, oh no, I don't want to do that. So I had done a little bit of research, actually, a little bit of industrial organizational or IO psychology uh, during my undergrad. And I had a friend in that same program who said, hey, I'm going to go get my master's of human resource management. Uh, do you want to come with me and do that? And I said, yeah, I have nothing else to do. So let's do that. Now, obviously, there was a little bit more thought into it than that. It actually did kind of fit with, I like the research aspect, the implementation that you can do at a business uh, involving the psychology of it all but you still have more of that hands-on with employees and other people. Uh, so during my MHRM degree, um, or as I call it, <clears throat> the clearing your throat degree, if you pronounce that acronym, uh, I actually did an internship at Cedar Point. For those of you who are aware of that, that's America's rock and roller coast, the uh, amusement park up in Sandusky, Ohio. I've been going there for years. I literally went there a few weeks ago, uh, as we do every year with my family. And I did a human resources there, which was everything and anything under the sun in human resources, just general, you know, generalist work. I was on the training team. Uh, we were hiring international employees. So there was working with the state department um, recruitment. I had to lay off my first employee as an intern myself 
at Cedar Point. So it was a very trial by fire situation there. Um, and then once I went to graduate my master's uh, program, I, I, I really thought about, you know, what, what is it that I want to go into? What field do I want to take this into? And what kind of organization do I want to work for? And working at a amusement park really made me focus and be intentional about, I want to work somewhere, and this is so corny, that deals in happiness. I want happiness of people to be the product that we work on. So I actually transitioned from my master's program to another internship. Uh, at Disney Consumer Products, which is the retail, the name of the retail division of Disney back at the time. And uh, I worked on the organizational development team specifically on engagement surveys and for the retail stores and the corporate kind of sector of that business as well. And then after that internship was up, moved over to Universal Studios Hollywood, go figure, another a theme park, which actually when I applied there, I had no, I was like Universal, that movie place. I'm from Ohio, so I had no idea. Uh, realized that it was in fact the park. So I was going back to an, another amusement park. Uh, or theme park, actually. And then uh, I did very similar things around employee engagement, really figuring out what motivates people to do their jobs beyond just money. And it, it basically carrot or the stick. We try to avoid the stick as much as possible. Um, and then I realized that I, in this role, I was doing a lot of programming in, in Excel and a lot of visual basic and deep analytics. And then asking people questions like, how can we help fix you from not feeling happy? And how can we help kind of change those things and seeing some management do that and some management not. So I found myself in turn doing both of those things that I avoided in undergrad and then combining them together, which actually I love doing. The combination of both of those things really turned out. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was part of a large layoff. Parks did not fare very well. We did not stay open in many places. And now I actually work for NBC Universal, kind of the corporate aspect of it in support of the people that I used to work with back at one of our uh, business segments in parks. So I do a lot of very similar things now. And uh, we can dig into it as we get into the additional questions throughout today. Um, but none of that would have been possible without the different connections that I made along the way. Uh, my boss right now is someone that I actually used to work with when I was at parks. So that connection, even through the pandemic, still maintained my connection with NBC Universal while I was unemployed. So um, there is so much value to the people you do meet along the way. So yeah, I'll, I'll give it back to you. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, everyone, for sharing those really impressive career journeys. I think some great examples of different paths and a common red thread, so to speak, of building relationships and, and making sure to stay in touch with those people who have your best interests at heart and whose interests align with yours. Um, your stories really highlight that power of, of making connections and finding community. So I'd like to start with asking how you have all created or grown your network over the years. Uh, anecdotally for myself, you know, I graduated, went into architecture based off of um, somebody I met in the projects department at BC, Boston College, where I graduated. And then one of my friends from BC knew someone who was hiring for a sponsorship role in NASCAR. Um, I knew her well enough to trust her. So I took the leap to move down to Charlotte. Uh, then I networked a ton when I was in NASCAR because the circuit travels all over the country. And that's how I ended up getting pulled out to Los Angeles to work with the Los Angeles Football Club. Then my former boss at the NASCAR team went to the PGA Tour. That's how I ended up going over to the PGA Tour. And then WISE, Women in Sports and Events, is a networking group that has chapters all over the country. And that is how I met my now boss, the president of the LA Sparks. So um, not to take too much time, but I think that thread is present certainly throughout my career, and I'm very curious to hear, um, Jackie, since you're involved with Boston Phi Beta Kappa Association, um, maybe you can start by sharing how that network has, and other networks you've taken advantage of, how that's influenced your trajectory thus far. Yeah, thank you. Um, happy to start with PBK Boston. So we're awesome. Uh, and uh, I was, um, when I was living in Boston, I was very involved with the PBK organization there. Um, and we actually helped organize last year's Key Connections event um, locally based in Boston. Uh, and um, it was titled Navigating Academia. Uh, I will admit that it was a little selfish of me because that was like a um, counterfactual of seeing what could have been if I did 
get to academia. And then um, we were very lucky to get a panel of amazing people who have built their careers in academia and who are in different stages. Some are students, some are professors, and uh, they spanned a very wide variety of fields. Um, and I frankly, like as the organizer, I learned a lot from that panel. Um, and they gave amazing tips, uh, including how to manage your work-life balance, how to, how to um, network effectively. And for me personally, it's always helpful to hear people who are further down their careers, have it all a little bit more together um, to talk about how they got there. Uh, and also some, from someone from not necessarily the same line of work as me to gain some fresh perspective. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a great network of people to have um, and I still keep in touch with um, a lot of them. Uh, and, and another network, I guess like formal networks that uh, I myself find very helpful. Like one of them is through my college. So as I mentioned before in my intro, uh, I was very late to the recruiting game. So by the time it was the second half of my junior year, uh, all the banks have already recruited. Um, there was precious little, like precious few jobs left. But um, through my friends who work in finance and through the alumni who um, work in that field, I was able to learn about finance, about recruiting. It's like drinking from the fire hose. Um, and so now that I've graduated, it's still an, an incredible network of women. So for those of you who don't, who don't know, Wellby is a um, traditional women's college. Uh, and um, there are alumni associations in all the big cities, uh, New York City, Boston, LA, et cetera. Uh, and we host events, panels sometimes, and it's a, um, just great resource to leverage. So if you, if I were to recruit for a different company, the first thing I do is go on LinkedIn and see who graduates from Wellesley who works there. Um, and people are very generous with their time, uh, even if you just call in mail or email. Um, so there's that. And third of all is through your job. So at Mass Mutual, we had a um, business resource group, which essentially is like a big little pairing where um, you can seek out a mentor, official mentor, uh, or a peer mentor from your colleagues. And I, having left Mass Mutual a year, a year ago, I am still in touch with my mentor from the business research group that I met from Mass Mutual. And she still offers amazing advice <laughs> relating to um, how to plan your career, how to honestly like communicate better, um, be a more effective friend, and all that. Um, so yeah, those are the kind of the formal networks that I've been very intentional about keeping in touch with. Um, and as for the informal ones, um, just day to day grabbing coffee with your colleagues um, and getting to talk about like getting to know what projects are being worked on and what the culture is like in different teams um, in a very relaxed environment is extremely helpful um, and definitely uh, contributes to uh, how effective you can be as an employee. Yeah. And with that, I'll turn, back, turn it back to you. Yeah, thank you for that. I think a couple of interesting things there. Um, one of the really cool benefits of Phi Beta Kappa is like you mentioned, Jackie, the opportunity to hear perspectives from people in totally different industries than you and a totally different look at uh, what you've done and maybe might be informed by more experience in what you do. And sometimes that's great to have somebody that doesn't, doesn't necessarily have the context you do to have them look at a problem. I think that's really interesting. Uh, and then the distinction you made between formal and informal networks, right? Like our friends uh, and our work colleagues are some of the most powerful network that we have. So I, I, love, I love both of those things that you brought up. Um, Mark and Kate, both of you work in careers that involve teaching leadership and professional development. Um, would love if you can share some of the most effective or your go-to networking tips that you share with employees and, and students. Um, maybe Mark, you can start us off. Yeah, of course. Um, now this, 
I, I'm very much more of a touchy feely kind of person when it comes to the skills that I, I talk about. I, I, I believe that there is such power in connection we have as human beings and just talking uh, with one another and the interactions that we have. And so one of the, the big pieces that I talk about is just in general, be kind, first and foremost, just be kind. And, and more importantly, treat people like people. This is something that I've just done throughout my entire career, throughout all of school. It's treat people like people. Do not talk to people's titles necessarily. Talk to them like people. You know, I have a name. I am a human being. You know how you'd like to be treated. The golden rule has been a huge part of my upbringing. As much as I complained against it every time my dad would say, treat others how you want to be treated. And I'd say, well, they treated me mean, so they want to be treated mean. He said, that's not how this works. So um, just first and foremost, just treat people like people. We are all in, the sim in similar situations. We have all at one point felt uncomfortable networking ourselves. Other people uh, will understand that. And I will say just to kind of position myself on this call is that I describe myself as an introvert disguised as an extrovert. I am very extroverted. I, I, I love to talk in front of people, but I am extremely shy when it comes to starting or initiating that kind of conversation. But to recognize and go into a situation realizing that I'm not alone in this. Other people have felt the same kind of, you know, nervousness going into it. It really helps. Um, and uh, just in general, be honest with people going into a conversation. Just um, letting people know, hey, I'm, I'm new to this networking. I don't know who to who to network with um so if you know you're starting a, a job somewhere you're entering some sort of group um talk to one person and then one this is actually a, a thing that i uh, kind of a skill that I, I we we do use when networking is once you've you met with someone that you have you have someone to ask questions to now you have something in common so ask that person who is one person that they would recommend that you network with and this has been extremely useful for me. Like I, I just recently started my role at a, uh, at the broader NBC Universal back in April. And as I had, you know, initial one-on-ones put on my calendar, one question that I would ask each one of those people I met with was, who is one other person that you think that I should meet? And can you make an introduction for me? Because that that gets rid of the, I don't know who to ask. I don't know who I'm supposed to network with. I don't know who the important people are. And it gets rid of the, I don't know how to initiate the conversation. So it effectively avoids my introverted tendencies, my shyness of, I don't want to initiate the conversation. I don't know how to initiate that. Um, and it, it basically takes that stress off of me and lets somebody else help me uh, do that. Someone who is much more comfortable interacting with the person that they're recommending to me. So that important, I think is, or that, that most importantly is, is something that I would highly recommend. Kate? Okay. Sure thing. And Mark and Jackie, I agree 100% with all that you've shared. Some of the tips I share with Villanova students is to leverage that university network. Alumni who participate in these networks want to hear from younger alumni, want to hear from alumni in general, and absolutely want to help and support students on their journeys. They're looking to share their expertise and their strategies for success. So having the courage to reach out. This could be potentially like via an email message, or if your university has a, a system, a platform of some kind that enables remote virtual networking to make sure you have a profile set up in that system and be active within that system. Maybe you're sharing articles, for example, related to your work or you're sharing job opportunities within your own organization with your university. That's a key thing too. I think for, for networking to be effective, it needs to be mutually beneficial so you want both parties to gain from the interaction. So sometimes I feel that my students think they're just continuing to ask, ask for things. However, students can also give so much. They can give kind of that contemporary lens, their interest, their energy, their desire to learn. Alumni and other working professionals who've been in their businesses for quite some time, that's fuel for them. 
So I try to teach students to realize this, like this is the value add that students are lending to these types of conversations. So I am a firm believer in, yes, the informal networks. These might be um, opportunities in your own current workplace. So those colleagues you interact with each and every day. I don't think I'd have the job I have today had I not built effective relationships with my colleagues at Villanova and was recommended for this particular role. Um, that all matters when people recognize that you can do good work and it's acknowledged um, that can lead to other things. And then on, on that more formal side, tapping into resources like Phi Beta Kappa, other professional associations within your industry, I think can be critically important. For me, there's the National Association for Colleges and Employers, and NACE hosts different events throughout the year in, personal, uh, in person as well as virtual. And then there's another organization, which isn't a national one, but it's called uh, the Delaware Valley um, Career Planners, DVCP. And it's people in roles like mine from universities in the greater Philadelphia area. And we're an embarrassment of riches in this area. There are many universities within a 50 mile radius of the city of Philadelphia. So learning, connecting with my peers at different schools um, has been remarkably helpful. Um, and oftentimes a, a, a larger meeting with a group will lead to five or six one-on-one -on -one meetings to follow. So my suggestions to professionals now who are launching their careers and looking to build them is to tap into those alumni networks, tap into the affinity groups, within your current organizations. Many businesses, companies, nonprofits have such organizations to uh, groups to support their employees um, and to make great use of them. And then look at those professional associations within your industry. Follow relevant hashtags on sites like LinkedIn or Twitter so that you know what the conversation is. And then you begin to see who are the thought leaders in these specific industries, who are thought leaders in my region. So you can look at networking like as a, as a regional exercise, as well as something that's industry specific too. So, so many ways, so many angles, so many perspectives here. Um, but those are some of the tips I share with my students today. I, I just want to jump in and add one thing there, Yala. I realize I am giving you, you are the timekeeper and you're like, don't say anything more. I have other questions to get to, but I want to just jump in real quick and add to that because there are so many of these organizations and opportunities that will come across your plate. You will see them. And if you're like me, you will have that first instinct of saying, oh no, I'm not going to go to that or I'm not going to do that. For instance, this panel I, when I first received that note from Anne saying, hey, would you like to be part of this? The first thing I thought in my head was, hell no, no, thank you. <laughs> but then I sat with it for a bit and said, you know what, maybe this is a great opportunity. And as Kate said, not just for you guys to hear from my experiences, but for me to be able to interact with all of you as a result, it is a two-way thing. Um, I mean, the other day, I also got an opportunity just to go to a Dodgers game. Uh, and sit in the NBC Universal box seats. I, my name got picked out of a hat. My first response to that was, I don't really follow sports. I'd rather give the seat to somebody else, but I thought, you know what, might be a good opportunity to network with some people and get to go with one of my colleagues on my team who was going to go. So I went to that. And Ron Howard, famed director and star of Happy Days, was there. So if you guys say yes to networking opportunities, you will meet Ron Howard. You heard it here first. Um, some great insight there. Thank you both. I, I love the using that one person that you've made a made an introduction to to help fuel the next one, um, ask, asking someone who they recommend. And then from Kate, and again, just now from Mark, like the, the embarrassment of riches, Kate said, of resources um, that you have available, whether it's you're in college and you're using your alumni groups or your career resource groups, um, or you're in your job and you have those affinity groups, um, people want to feel helpful, right? That's part of a mutually beneficial relationship. And if they're volunteering to be part of those things, absolutely leverage them. This is great, great insight. Really appreciate that. Um, so I want to kind of go chronologically. 
So we have identified a networking event. We've gotten over the hump of deciding to go. Um, what are some tips for strengthening a first impression? And this could be elevator pitches, or maybe we're not networking and we're cold reaching out to somebody on LinkedIn or email. Um, Kate, I'd like to hand it back to you. Maybe some a tip or two about strengthening that first impression. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm going back to what Mark has shared about being kind in our interactions, approaching these opportunities to connect as conversations. I think that's key. Um, I think also doing a little bit of practice, if you'd like, before the event is important. It might seem somewhat scripted, but we're not I'm not suggesting that you deliver your quote elevator pitch, which would be that 15 second, who are you, why are you here, what are you looking for types of remarks, but rehearse it a little bit so that when it's time to extend that hand and greet someone and meet them, it naturally comes to you and you're able to share that with ease, you're comfortable, you're relaxed because you've practiced it prior to the event. So I think that is really important um, upon meeting someone for the first time. Um, and in that elevator pitch, um, you're thinking about the event you've identified, you've worked up the courage to go. Um, what's the nature of the event? Um, what maybe similarities will you share with some of those individuals in the room? Often we can tell, like for here, for example, Phi Beta Kappa is a unifier. Maybe that is part in some way of our elevator pitch for an event like this. That pitch will, of course, vary depending upon what events we are attending. The core of it perhaps will remain the same. Of course, you know, your name, where you're from, potentially what it is that you're looking for, what you seek, but some of these other things will change. I'm a Dodger fan. Um, Happy Days was my favorite television show growing up, right? So you're going to like, like be what you can anticipate, you can weave into those remarks and it all of a sudden feels far more authentically you and less labored. So those are some of my, my tips for getting started at an event. That's great. And I think all of us here in Phi Beta Kappa are used to being high achievers. And we got here by one or one of two ways. We're used to practicing for things. And in that case, it's great advice to let that guide you going forward. Or we're not used to having to do so much work. And you kind of have to convince yourself to practice at these things, especially when a lot of our skill sets are not um, networking specific. So um, I love the, the practicing piece. I think sometimes we tend to be too prideful to want to do it, but it's, it, it can go so far. Um, I want to try and get two more questions in before we, we go to breakout rooms. So um, Jackie and Mark, if you have anything that you really are dying to add there, cut me off. But um, I want to ask about follow-up and maintaining so you've had a great successful connection, either you're at a networking event, you've made some great connections, or maybe somebody's answered and you had that initial virtual coffee uh, with someone that you hope is going to be a mentor, a part of your network. Um, some favorite tools or methods for following up and maintaining that relationship. Jackie, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Um, so I, I would say that in addition to practicing um, your own elevator pitch, you also want to practice and do some research on the person that you're talking to. So when you're at a networking event or when you first establish that relationship, um, LinkedIn is a great place to stalk, to research people. And um, uh, you're, when, when you know a lot about this person um, before you get into a conversation, the rapport is already kind of built for you. And you can also find a lot of unifiers, as Kate mentioned, um, if you know a little bit more about their background. So I, I would say that. And then second of all is um, when you establish that kind of mentor-mentee relationship um, when you network with someone, um, the other person would want to help you uh, continuously because usually helping people makes you feel good. And so when you have a career update or when you just want some advice or um, some 
insights uh, into a decision, you can reach out and um, always thank the other person for their time um, and say that, hey, I have this issue coming up and I would really appreciate your perspective on this. And I've uh, found myself like, especially with people who um, I've built a very long relationship with professionally, um, I know their birthdays and that's always a good day, good thing, you know, good event to uh, catch up and um, just uh, ex ex exchange life updates. That's great. And like you said, it doesn't have to be super, super complex, really deep understanding of what they're working on day to day, even if you have a touch point like a birthday. Um, that's great. What about you, Mark? Um, I would say when it comes to just, I mean, I'll, I'll touch on a few things. I, I, want, I did want to add something before, but I wanted to wait my turn so you can keep the schedule. <laughs> um, I think names are so important. Names are extremely valuable to people. I mean, we made the joke at the top of this that I, I had mentioned to pronounce my name with a C, not with a K, which is a joke I like to say because obviously they sound the same in the name Mark. But um, people's names are very important. It, it, it's it's the, one of the most unique things to us. So obviously. So um, even just in a, in a first meeting with someone, remember their name, practice using people's names, repeat it back to them, say, hey, thank you, and then say their name just so it reinforces it in your head and lets them know I have committed you to my memory. People often like to say, oh, I'm terrible with names. Get not terrible with names. Be good with names. It's extremely nice when someone, when you're, when you feel kind of in an, in a situation where maybe you feel a little bit uncomfortable and someone up, someone walks up and says, oh, hey, Mark, how are you? Suddenly you have become part of a group. You have kind of a safety net with you. So use people's names, be that for somebody else, be that comfort for somebody else. But then um, kind of going to the, to the end of that, once you've met somebody, kind of follow up steps with, with people. I would say set steps, expectations at the end of first meeting someone, whether it's as simple as, hey, uh, can I get your card? Can I get your business card? Whatever that is. Can I get your email address so we can follow up on this? Can I add you on LinkedIn? Um, but set those specific expectations with that person of I'm going to reach out with you or to you later and we can talk about, we can continue this discussion as opposed to just saying, hey, it was great to meet you. And then there's no expectation that we're ever going to talk again. You are now just somebody that I used to know. I will not sing the song, though I do like that song. Um, we, you know, set that expectation that this is not just a one-off event. This is something where I'm, I am building a relationship with you. And that is the expectation coming out of this. Now, if you reach out to them after words and they don't respond in kind you've done you've done your part of the networking but don't feel like you can't set those expectations with people and and make sure that in whatever follow-up you're doing you also use their name absolutely that's great and i want to pick out that last piece there i personally am in sales so this resonates a lot but for all the people who do want to help and will respond in kind do not be discouraged if somebody doesn't, uh, because there's there's people that will. And if you try again, I guarantee next time is going to be better because more often than not, they do want to help. So don't, if it doesn't go well the first time or the third or the 10th, do not let that discourage you because there's plenty out there. Absolutely. Um, I think we are about at time. So Soleil, Soleil, I'm so sorry, Soleil. I keep, I don't know why I keep saying that. Soleil will let me know if we can squeeze in another one, but otherwise I will hand it over uh, to Soleil to, to take it. Uh, into the next. If if we are at time indeed, uh, I want to thank all of our panelists. Uh, we really hope you can take away something from these conversations here tonight. And we'll move into the interactive portion now. If there's one thing I would drive home, it's that we're all here and take that as engagement that I'll speak for these three and I'll hear about it if I'm wrong, but I think they would love to be followed up with if you want to hear more from them and would love to be a resource. So please don't hesitate to reach out to Soleil um, and we'll we'll try and get more questions answered and develop more relationships if indeed that's something that you want to leverage. So thank you all.